I can, you know, just get angry and just go to bed. Don't allow anger or unforgiveness to fester. If you're angry, go ahead and deal with it right then. Do not let it grow. Because every day that you go without prayer about it, it's gonna, it's gonna get, it's gonna be like a, 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 a bubble, you know, that will eventually pop. And then you don't want that to happen. Don't walk away from your spouse in the middle of your discussion. How many's done that? I have done that. <laughs> you know, and uh, Rick used to be really good about um, where we would be in a little, you know, argument when we first married, and he would say, he would just walk off, and I'd say, where are you going? And I would, fo- now I don't know if any of you ladies do this, I'd go, where are you going? And I'd follow him, and he'd say, I'm going to pray. And I'd say, but I want to deal with it right now, and he says, no, you really want me to pray right now. Now I know why he said what he said. And ladies, if your husband does that, let him go and pray. He's going to save you both a lot of heartache. Um, so that's the one. I, mean, I, I love that part about him because he's still to this day. He'll just walk off. And you're like, where are you going? <laughs> I'm not through talking about it. He said, yes, you are. <laughs> you're through. <laughs> and so if they say that, just let them go. And they're going to go pray. And he, if, if you're a, truly led by the Spirit of God, you'll come back and deal with the situation. But it'll be in love and not in anger. Don't ignore your spouse. Don't uh, interrupt your spouse. If they are talking, please don't interrupt them and and try to help them talk. They do not need you to help them talk. Men, you do not need to help your women talk. And women, you do not need to help your husband talk. He can talk for himself and she can talk for herself. Uh, I know Keith Moore says if if you're talking... And someone else is talking, or, I mean, someone else is beside you and they interrupt you, that's a form of pride. You're saying what, what I have to say is more important than what you just said. So that's, a, that's an issue you have to deal with is pride. In every relationship, we all have pride. I, I know ours used to be one of the things, which it's sad to, to admit this, um, I've done worship for years. And... Uh, we had some people that really couldn't sing, and uh, they would start singing, and I would just like, they can't sing. <laughs> and 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 when Kreffler, I mean, when uh, Keith Moore said what he said, because he brought that out, he said, he said, you know, when you're in a service and someone's up there singing, and then you know, you're thinking they really can't sing, and he said that's a part uh, a part of of pride. You're saying that you're better than them. And I had to, I had to really focus on that because even when I'd play, I'm not the best piano player. It took me years to realize that I'm not very good, you know? But I had, to, I had to come to grips with there are a lot of great players. I would not even, even try to play against them, you know? But it was a pride issue. I used to, when we pastored a church, I, pl- I played the piano and I led the worship. And um, I had hurt my arm because, you know, I, thought, I sometimes think I'm a man because I love to hunt. Not everybody likes to hunt, but I like to hunt. And um, so, but we had, built, we had built our house, and I told Rick, I'll, I'll just put all the insulation in the house. And he said, uh, well, if you want to do that, because he, he couldn't touch it because it always made him itch. So I thought, you know, I'm just as, you know, uh, strong as the man. So I went in there to do it. Well, in two days, I had it completed. And I used one of them staplers, you know, that you push down, you know, because I like to do physical things. You know, I'm more, I know I don't look like I like to do physical things, but I really do. And um, so I did that, and I had pulled this muscle, and it had fell down here. And so it caused me not to be able to play the piano for almost a year. And I had to let my niece come in and, and play, which was a stretching for her because she always said, no, I don't, can't play by myself. I just want to back you up. And so she had to, she, I had to go and tell her that the Lord told me I had to step down to let her play. And um, that's when I had to deal with the pride issue, thinking that no one could replace me. 
Every one of us are replaceable. Never get to a place where you think you're irreplaceable because every one of us can be replaced. And so you have, you have to deal with that. And then that's even in a marriage. You can be replaced. So don't think, oh, I'm such this wonderful person that I can't be replaced. Because you know what? You can be replaced. And so you have to stay focused on the Lord. You have to stay focused in love. And don't let pride come in and think you're all that. Because we're not all that, but we are all that in Him. Amen? Amen? Jesus makes us all that. But never get to a place where you think you're all that, where you're untouchable. Always stay touchable. Don't yell or use sarcasm. How many of us used sarcasm before? <laughs> Woo! How many yelled? <laughs> that, that was my, uh, my number one thing. My mom and dad used to holler all the time, so I thought that was normal in a relationship, just to holler. Uh, but Rick didn't, he doesn't do the hollering thing. Let me just tell you one little thing that happened in our marriage. <laughs> <laughs> we were married maybe three or four days. Maybe, I don't even think we were married a, a week. And um, I had gotten angry, and my mom used to slam doors. She'd go and she'd just slam a door. Well, <laughs> I, 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 he had made me mad, so I went in the bedroom and I slammed the door. And he'd come in there. And he said, I want you to get up off that bed. I want you to get back up and reshut that door. We don't slam doors in this house. And I said, I don't know who you think you are, but I am not getting up and reshutting that door. <laughs> Again, I was 17. I thought I knew everything. And he said, you either get up and reshut that door or... I'm going to pack your bags, and you're going back home to your parents because you're not old enough to be married. <laughs> and I said, well, I'm not getting up and reshutting that door. <laughs> he, got my, <laughs> he got my suitcase out. <laughs> he got my suitcase out, and he, pat, he started putting on my clothes in the bag. And I said, okay, okay, I don't want to go back home. <laughs> So, you know what? He taught me a lot when we first married. <laughs> Number one, he wasn't going to put up with me being childish. Because you can be childish and still even be older. You know, you think you're just all that and you're not. And he is the head of the house. And if he says you're not shutting doors like that, you're not going to shut a door like that. But, I, you know, I always kid my brother because he married a younger woman and she does little things like that. So pack her bags and send her home. <laughs> <laughs> and, and he said, uh, I don't think I would want to do that to her. She might really leave. <laughs> but he's got a great relationship now. But it was rocky, you know, because he was a lot older than her. But anyway, so make sure, ladies, you uh, if he tells you to reshut the door, just get up and reshut the door. <laughs> don't go back home. Don't discuss your side of the story with outsiders such as relatives and friends. And that's what I brought out earlier. Make sure you do not do that. Don't, don't go tell your family that your husband made you reshut the door. <laughs> of course, when I told my mom, she said, well, good for him. You know, you wasn't going to get to come back home anyway. That's what my mom always <laughs> said. She said, you're the one that chose to get married. You're going to stay in the marriage. Um, don't make... Ab uh, Absolute statements like, you never and you always. Instead, I feel. Make sure you don't say, well, you never. <laughs> How many's done that? I've done that. You never and, um, and you always do that. You know, don't, don't say that. You know, it's not, it's not encouraging. It's not of the Lord. It's not in love. So just don't say that. <laughs> Don't forget to pray and seek God's guidance every day. Make sure that, I'm telling you, that's first and most priority in your life is to pray and seek the face of the Lord and hear from Him and He will, direct, he will always direct us in the right direction. And don't give up, cave in, or quit. So many relationships that we've seen and that we've counseled they go into a relationship thinking, well, if it don't work, we'll just get a divorce. If you're going in a relationship with it, don't even get married. 
Just stay single because I'm telling you, it will not work because the devil will make sure of it. So make sure that you go in the relationship. You, I always tell Rick, he's, he's, he's never going anywhere. He's mine until we both die or go to heaven. He, he's mine. And I always make sure everybody knows he's mine. <laughs> you know, because, you know, I don't know if y'all have noticed, but sometimes when women come in the church, you know, people you've known for years do weird things sometimes, you know, and they try to look at your husband in a way, and you know it. And listen, men, this is vital. This is vital. If your wife says there's a woman checking you out, listen to her. She's seeing something you're not seeing because most men are like, yeah, they don't ever look at me. Well, hello, they are, okay? And it's, and it's the same way with the men. If the men tells you wives, hey, I'd rather you not hug that person, there's something not quite there, listen to them, there's wisdom there. They're not saying that because, oh my gosh, they're so jealous and they're afraid you're going to leave. They're telling you that for a reason. So always listen to what your spouse is saying. Because I'm telling you, if, if, when somebody tries to do something, I mean, we had a really good friend of ours that actually, uh, actually liked my husband. And we were part of the praise team together, and I kept, I kept saying, uh, telling my husband, there's something wrong. I, I, I can't sing with this person anymore. There's something not right. I, I never could put my finger on what it was, but there was something not right. And then every time I'd go to, or when I went to a ladies' conference, she was actually calling my husband. And he told her that she, he said, you know, no, nothing is there. I assure you, there is nothing there. And you need to get grips on this or I'm going to have to tell, you know, my wife. And so he finally told, uh, told me. And um, I actually went into depression. I have never been in depression. But I was so hurt because it was somebody I grew up with my whole life that I trusted, that we went on trips with. And I'm telling you, it, it, can, it can be really hard on a relationship. I trusted him completely. And I knew that I knew when he said something was happening that she was, she was actually doing what he said. I knew, I knew enough because I knew, say, see, before the Lord had already showed me, hey, something's not right while we were leading worship. And I kept telling him, I said, I've got to get off the praise team. Something's not right. We're not flowing anymore. All that time, the Lord was trying to tell me, she's got something wrong, you know, a thing for your husband. And she was married. She was a married woman. And, and when he came and told me, he, you want to share that? <laughs> well, what happened was, uh, what happened? Am I on here? What happened was, my wife, uh, we had a school, we had, um, uh, probably eight or nine employees at the church and my wife had left with the administrator to go to a ladies meeting because she's on the board there and I was I had an office in my home and I was at my home and you know she, this lady calls me on the phone and starts saying things like you know pastor I know you got feelings for me and all this kind of stuff and I'm like uh, huh whoa wait a minute <laughs> She said, the way you hugged me at uh, some kind of Christmas banquet we had or something, I said, listen, I don't know what kind of message you got from that, but there's nothing there. I said, the bottom line is, you know, I like you as a friend. I love your husband. You know, you guys have been with us for several years. But if you know, I, I apologize. I said, listen, if you got some kind of wrong thought that I, you thinking I was coming on to you or something, I said, I, I ask you to forgive me because there's nothing there. There will never be anything there. Well, this lady, she starts saying, well, okay, okay, and starts repenting on the phone. And I said, she said, well, do you want me to step down from the praise team? I said, well, listen, as long as you know right now you've got this issue dealt with, 